What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Press X Podcast, episode 27, your weekly podcast for gaming news and opinions, coming at you each and every Monday at noon Eastern. I am Kevin McManus. With me, as always, Kellen Willard. What's up? Oh, not too much. Nice shirt. Thank you. I like it. I'm a big fan. Yeah. Today, we're going to be talking about Pokemon Go. Sweet. We're going to be talking about uh, VR prices, and we're going to be talking about Resident Evil 4, which is a uh, beloved Resident Evil game. Is it? Uh, yeah, actually. So they decided to put out the collection, and they did it backwards, and 4 is finally coming out, so people care now. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I also wanted to give a mention to uh, Unicorn Storm, who liked one of my reviews I did, and they were like, I'm going to go look at your other reviews. And they're like, I can't find them, because all your thumbnails look exactly the same, and it's just a wall of the same thumbnail. Uh, and I was like, yeah, that makes sense. So you may have noticed last week, but f- from now on, the podcasts are going to have a red border. So you'll be able to pick them out easily. Um, The reviews will probably be blue. They'll be a different color. Unboxings will be a different color, and they'll be consistent. Um, They'll always be that color. So if you, like, only care about the unboxings, you can just look for the green one or whatever color unboxings end up being. So I I saw that, and I was like, that is a solid point. I like it. And then he's like, maybe you should make a playlist. And I was like, that's also a solid point. So there's playlists now for, like, the reviews. Hey, quit being lazy for once. Oh, man, it's a lot of work. (laughs) Uh, Let's move on to the news. This is news that matters to me and probably literally only me. All right. Uh, Azure Striker Gunvolt Pack was announced uh, for the 3DS. It's coming out on September 30th, which I believe is the same day as Final Fantasy 15. I think so. If I remember correctly. Um, And there's also going to be a new anime coming in the winter. So this was two separate games. It's one and two that were very heavily Mega Man inspired. Uh, they were done by Indie Crates who did Mega Man 9 and 10 and Mighty Number no. 9 and all this stuff. Um, very similar. Y- you can play a mode, I believe, I haven't played them, where uh, you beat bosses and then you get their powers and all that stuff. It's a little more fast paced. I would say it's more like a Super Nintendo game than a Nintendo game. Um, I played, they gave out a free version which was kind of like an 8-bit version of it. It's almost like they dumbed it down, and it was a shorter thing. It was only like an hour or something. Yeah. Um, and I played through that and really liked it. And I was like, oh, I'm going to buy these other ones. And then it was digital only, and it's only on 3DS, which it still is, unfortunately. And I was like, man, I really want to play these, but I don't know when I'll have time, whatever. Well, they announced a pack. I think it's 30 bucks. You get both games, physical uh, copy. I was like, this is sweet. Perfect for you. Yeah, so I'll be getting that. I actually, I think I'm getting two 3DS games this year, oh, which yeah. is unbelievable. That and Pokemon? Yeah. yeah. We'll see. We're going to talk about Pokemon. That was my first Pokemon exposure. Yeah, I know. It, it's not bad. Um, this one's for Todd. <coughs> may you rest Killer in Instinct. Peace. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Killer Instinct may add Jonah Dark. <coughs> Joanna Dark? Yeah, Joanna Dark. Sorry. Um, they also talked about a Crackdown Agent and a Halo Brute. Um, so this is really becoming their t- attempt at like a Smash Brothers. It seems like they're putting in all of their properties that aren't really tied to Microsoft at all, which is kind of weird. Kind of odd, but yeah. whatever. Um, like Battletoads and stuff. But yeah, I think she would be awesome in the game. That's who I would pick out of those three. So I agree. I definitely don't want another Halo character. Yeah. I, unless you'd put in Master Chief, because that would make more sense. That's who you should put in. Yeah. Though they'll probably put in Locke, because they make terrible Whatever. decisions. Yeah, yeah. Um, I really don't want to crack down Agent. I don't he care doesn't at really all. fit that. But <laughs> I don't care at all. I want Conquer. Yeah, yeah, no. I think Conquer would be cool. I could see that working. Like him just uh, almost like Sweet Tooth from All Stars. He can spin in a circle with like his chainsaw out. and I, I just see that working very well. That's fine. You can he do some tail whips. weapons and stuff, yeah. Uh, you can put in Viva Pinata. No, you can't. <laughs> no. <laughs> when he dies, he explodes into <laughs> confetti, <laughs> candy. No, that's a bad idea. Um, yeah, I figured Todd could talk about it, but he's dead, so. But we don't know. He might actually be this time. <laughs> that's fair. We don't know what happened. Uh, last we saw Todd, he was passed out on a bed, so. Uh, a new Overwatch hero has been teased. Yeah. Basically, all we got was a tweet that had a, what seemed like this new character's gun. Uh, it was a sniper rifle similar to, what's her name, Widowmaker? Yeah. Uh, similar to that, and it has a healing option. So it looks like it's a sniper healer, which has been the rumored character for forever. For a while, yeah. 
Um, so you're the Overwatch person. Two things I don't care about. Next character. <laughs> <laughs> Give me something else. I like to play tanks and people that are fight up close, though. So. If it is a long-range or, healer, or would that be the only long-range healer in the game? Long-range healer, yes. The other one's got to be pretty close to you. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. At least. It would be It would be interesting. It'd probably be fun to play with, but mm -hmm. just not my style. Let's play more Roadhog. That's fine. He's got a hook. He's got the hook and the shotgun style weapon. Or Torbjorn. Make turrets. Hide behind him. It's easy. I think he made that name up. No. Uh, Resident Evil 4 is officially coming out August 30th. First they put out Resident Evil 6, then they put out Resident Evil 5, and now they're putting out the one everybody actually wants. Um, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about Resident Evil 4. You have not played this? Correct. Right. This, I, this I'm going to get this. We're going to play, play I do want to play this game. I've I really like Resident Evil 4. It was, th I'm going to say, their perfect blend of action and horror. It's a little more action than I probably would have liked. I should, probably shouldn't say perfect. But it was very, very, very good. I'm inter I haven't played it basically since it came out on the GameCube. So I'm very interested to see how it holds up and stuff. There's some things in it that I know people don't like. Uh, like you can't shoot and walk at the same time. Yeah, that's why I've never played this game. It drives me crazy. Uh, you can't. The weird one is you can't knife and walk at the same time. You have to stop and then pull out your knife and then. But anyway, it's really really good because it's still limiting in the way that old horror games were limiting. Where if you feel like a badass, the game's not scary. Yeah, that's. Part, I think that's part of the reason they do that. Mm -hmm. So they make it so that your controls are a little clunky, uh, like the tank controls of the past, so yeah. that. It's scarier because if you do panic, you're going to start messing things up. If you up. mess up, you're in trouble, yeah. Yeah, you can't just like run and mow a bunch of stupid zombies down. Um, this was the biggest departure for the series, and everybody kind of criticized it, and then it came out, and everybody loved it. Um, and then 5 and 6 kind of tarnished that. And yeah. then Resident Evil 7 is coming out, and it's a first-person game. And it's another huge departure. And once again, hardcore fans are like, this is dumb, this is in Resident Evil. But I feel like it's exactly what 4 did and everybody loved 4. So I'm actually expecting 7 to be quite critically acclaimed. Yeah, it'll probably do well. Um, so yeah, I think it's 20 bucks. It's only 20 bucks for the PS4 That's one. Fair. And they've done now, I think they've done they've done 4, 5, 6. They've done uh, 0. They've done the first one. They're remaking a whole bunch. They said that they're redoing 2, but they're like... Redoing too, it's completely not completely rebuilding. Yeah, it's not yeah. a remaster. Um, so th they've stated many times that they're all in on the remakes because they're doing very well. And honestly, I kind of want to buy them all just to say I have all the Resident Evil collection all when the they're Resident. done. Yeah. Um, I've never, I've always been a Silent Hill person. Love Silent Hill. Resident Evil. The only one that I really liked was four, and I haven't played enough of the old ones to really have an opinion on them. So I really want to go back and get, uh, at least like four backwards yeah two and four are the ones i always hear people talk about yeah, everybody so. loves to yeah i've seen some of two play but i've never played it um let's talk about no man's sky all right it's gone gold uh for people who Finally. don't know gone gold means that the final like master copy has been made it's on a disc and yeah. you can send it out to get it uh have mass it, produced have it produced uh, they took a photo, holding up the disc, everybody drinking, having a good time. Yeah. Very happy. Um, team of, like, I think it was 14 people I counted. The yeah, wasn't that the whole team, or most yeah. of the team? Yeah. Like, it's a very small team working on that game, and people, I don't think people understand that. Yeah. Uh, this game is huge. And it's also, I guess it's published by Sony. I'm not 100% sure on that. But um, it's a $60 game. Which, if it's not published by Sony, which I'm pretty sure it is, would be the most expensive indie game. Probably, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's coming out. It's coming out on disc and stuff. So there, I'm gonna say there's. Almost it doesn't feel like an indie game. No way. It's yeah. But I mean, it, it was an independent studio that I yeah. think Sony then funded after they like kind of picked like, up. Oh, the this project. is a good idea. We'll so, give them some money. Yeah, I think it's more like a second party game. Um, but anyway. Uh, Sean Murray, who's the head of the studio, was tweeting out all week, and I was trying to figure out what it was. He kept tweeting, things are happening. Then the next day, he'd do it again. Then he tweeted it with all the text overlaid over each other, and you had to like highlight to see what it was saying. And it, it, it said, things are happening, things are happening, things are happening. I'm like, what does that mean? I was really hoping for the VR announcement, but the game yeah. still comes out before VR. And then it looks like the thing that was happening is the game's done. They, uh, were, they realized they were about done. Yeah, so that's fine. 
Uh, they also, I don't think we talked about it on here. They also had a lawsuit problem. Um, they they were getting sued uh, in Britain, I believe, uh, because of, they had the name Sky in their title, and they have a company, a TV company or something there named Sky. Oh yeah, Sky, Sky Sports. And I know of Sky Sports. They, I they sued League. them, or they attempted to, or they were doing a case or something, and they got ruled in favor that they could keep the name No Man's Sky because they were going to have to change it. And you might say that's stupid, which it kind of is. Um, this is the same company that went after Microsoft for having SkyDrive, which doesn't exist anymore because they won that case, and Microsoft had to change it to the OneDrive. Oh, yeah. Um, so it, it was a real you know, uh, possibility that they were going to... Win the case, I guess, but uh, No Man's Sky is the name. Good. I so, like the name. I like that name, too. It, yeah. It's uh, mysterious enough to be interesting, but not obscure enough to be stupid. Yeah. Battleborn. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Um, let's just talk about Pokemon Go. All right. Pokemon Go came out officially uh, a couple days ago, whatever, a week ago, I guess, by the time this posts. Um, it's my first Pokemon game. Mine, too. No. Um... I downloaded it, and I'm sure it's free, so I'm sure most people have probably at least heard of it and tried it. I'd imagine a lot of people have tried it by Made now. up their mind. Even my girlfriend's playing it, who doesn't barely knows what a Pokemon is, um, and she's having a lot of fun. So basically, this is a game that uses your GPS to map out where you are, and then puts... It like kind of alerts you if there's a Pokemon near you, and then you can, if you're close enough, you can tap on it and attempt to catch it with a limited number of Pokeballs that you have. Literally that just chuck Pokeballs at it. And then um, if you run out of Pokeballs, you can go to these centers, which are real places uh, that have been converted on the GPS to, like, Poke Centers. Yeah, you get this little blue square above them. And, you go. Mm-hmm. and if you're in range of them, you can uh, touch on them, and it'll give you items so you can get more Pokeballs or potions to heal your guy or an egg. I got an egg. Uh, where you have to walk around for a whole bunch to hatch the eggs. hatching for so a while. <laughs> we're not hatching any of our I think I have five or six eggs now. None of them are. I've still just got the one. Going to hatch. Um... And then the big part of it is there's gyms, which will be certain landmarks in your town. Um, and you can go to a gym, and there'll be a, a Pokemon there, a big old scary Pokemon, and you can f- basically battle it with one of your Pokemon. And I believe if you win, you like take over that gym, and it's your Pokemon there. Uh, I think there. you have to do a couple battles. I don't know. I haven't. I did the first one, and I died. So, uh, okay. Or my Pokemon died, so I only get, didn't get very far. But and you drop basically you drop off your Pokemon there, and then you control the gym, and people that pass it will see your name and everything on that until somebody else takes it over. It's kind of like King of the Hill in real life. Yeah, kind of. Which is really cool. This is an awesome concept. Oh, I love it. It's great. I could, like I downloaded it, and I was kind of like, whatever. Um, this is silly. And then I, I actually kind of got into it, and I was like, this is kind of neat. Yeah, it's a really neat concept. Yeah, I, I do really like the concept. Um, so I, I was playing it, Bulbasaur, as my Pokemon. I, Your I, starter, I, yeah. Yeah. Um, my best one is a bunch of eggs that I think I named Hard Boiled or something like that. Oh, the Executor? I, I, yeah. yeah. Executor or whatever? Executor. Um, I think it was the, it was the one with more eggs, and they're all cracked. Is that... Are they? Is that oh, the same? execute. I guess so. It's one of those two. I don't know I don't know oh, there's one that looks like a pineapple, huh? Yeah, he evolves into one that has all the eggs like around him, like yeah. as his heads. I don't have him yet. Yeah. Um, but you can catch multiples of the same one. It gives you experience and stuff to basically level up or uh, like evolve or power up the ones that you already have, so they can be stronger. It's a fun time waster. Yeah, it's a great time waster. A very dangerous game. Or don't play while you're driving. <laughs> so do not play while you're driving. There's been tons of reports of people playing this while they're driving. I have no clue who would do that. Both people in this conversation. <laughs> um, but there's been like car crashes and stuff, apparently. Allegedly. Yeah, I don't know that one was real. I saw I yesterday. guarantee you there's been at least one. Oh, I know there has been. Um, from people playing this game, basically you have to click on it and be in ranged and you have to be fast enough. So if you're driving down the street, your phone will vibrate and you're like, oh, there's a Pokemon and you have to like look away. And then to actually physically catch it, it puts it somewhere like 360 degrees in yeah, the room. Yeah, it's like and you have to like look around and try and find it like the dumb Wii U pad and then flick the Pokeballs at it to so catch it. So if you it. turn while trying to do this, it gets very difficult. <laughs> yeah, so you can get disoriented if you turn your car from where it started and all that stuff. Uh, so it's it's dangerous. You so probably don't, shouldn't don't do it. Don't do it while driving. <laughs> 
Um, if you're walking around, that's where it works best. That's what it was that, designed, what it was for. designed for. It yeah. also helps because it's very Japanese centric, like Tokyo and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, the eggs only hatch if you are walking, in as opposed to driving. So you can't just drive the distance. You have to actually walk it, um, or find a way to cheat it. I'm sure there's a way out I'm there. I'm sure somebody will find. So I was telling you a fun story. Um, so <laughs> my stepmom, the power went out for a very long time. There was yeah, an electric pole. You're yeah, it's still hanging, by the way. literally split in half. It's still just, like, hanging over, by the way. I drove by it on the way here. <laughs> um, oh, that's not scary at all. <laughs> so it was, like, 4 a.m. I just got home, and my sister was up, my stepmom was, was up, and she's like, I'm bored. They have their phone lights on, like, making light, whatever, to see. And she's like, let's drive around, and you can catch the Pokemon on the game. And I'm like, okay, sure. So Deal. we got in the car. She's driving around. We're we're catching Pokemon. We're going to all the Poke stops in town and everything. I caught a couple good ones. Um, my sister downloaded it. She was playing it. She got way better things than I did. I don't I don't Lucky. know why her stuff was all stronger. She got a bunch of starters. And I was like, how do you? This isn't fair. I've seen one in the wild and didn't. Yeah, get she it got a Bulbasaur. Driving. She saw two Bulbasaurs. She got a Squirtle. I was like, this is bullshit. It's BS. Yeah, I haven't gotten any of this stuff. Um. So we're driving around. My phone dies. Uh, she just so doesn't want to go home to the dark house that she's like, whatever. <laughs> she went to the gas station, got me a phone charger. <laughs> we were just playing. We were out for like an hour and a half. We went to McDonald's <laughs> for something. I got a coffee. It was great. It was good times. Coffee at 4 a.m.? Me. All right. Um, so, yeah, it's good times. It's a good little social game, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's fun. They don't have any sort of trading yet, but they say that they're adding That's it. That's supposed to be added. They don't have a friends list, which is what I have a problem with. Um, I think whenever multiple people are playing at the same time, you should be able to see them. Interact uh, in some way. Yeah, you should yeah. be able to at least see them on your map and maybe add them as a friend. Um, that, that may be difficult, seeing them on the map. Seeing everybody, that might be kind of hard to do. Well, how many people do you think are going to be... Pl- I guess if there was a million people in one area, like a can- like Comic-Con, yeah. and like everybody was out on their phones. Just like, yeah. But like even then, I f- feel like you, you could do that. Yeah, I, I feel like that there needs to be a friends list for sure of some kind. Yeah. Um, or you. like, yeah, maybe add a friends list and you only see your friends you only or see your something friends, like yeah. that. But they need to add that. They need to add local battling. And there's stuff missing from there's it. But just as a waste time collectathon. I think this is I just like a it. test of concept kind of thing. Yeah, they're well, going to add all that stuff. They've later. got lots of downloads. I can yes. promise you. It was the number one app on the App Store. Oh, yeah. Like the day it came out. I'm sure know. it was. That's impressive. Um, yeah, so I recommend Pokemon Go. It's oh, a it's a blast. Yeah. It's the second phone game I've ever played. Cause me, you me know too. me in phone games. I hate them. Yeah, they're and, fun. Nope. And Kingdom Hearts Unchained Key and Pokemon Go. The only That's two it. good phone games. There's more than two good phone games? There's really not, though. I mean, I hadn't spent money on any of them, so they can't be that good. But yeah, there, There's really not. Good way to <clears> kill time. Uh, let's talk about PSVR. So PSVR's pricings have been revealed. For some games, not all. For a few things, yeah. And uh, way more expensive than I would have thought. Yeah, some of the ones you told me I didn't understand. Uh, Arkham VR, which is about an hour to two hour experience, though it's replayable, is $20 and it's coming out physically. I think that that's fair. My favorite thing about this is it means it's not coming with the Arkham pack that we were talking about last week. How yeah. I was kind of scared that they were going to delay it, it and then be like, well, if you buy it, you get the Arkham VR. Like, that sucks. Um, <laughs> there's VR Worlds, which is PlayStation's like five tech demos. I think it's got like a, a, sh- like a street racing thing. It's got a shark tank where you go in the water and a shark attacks you. Um, it's got London Heist, which is supposed to be awesome. Yeah. Um, it has... I don't know. It's got two more. But they're shorter experiences. Yeah. Um, you they're know, not full ten, game, just... Yeah, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe. Um, and there's five of them. And that's $40. That seems a little ridiculous. That is way more than I thought it was going to be. This is the game that comes with the $500 bundle, so I guess it makes sense. But yeah, I was just kinda. super shocked. Like I went from wanting that to being like, ooh, I'll wait and see if they put the games out. Because the only one I really want to play is London Heist. Yeah. I know, the Shark Tank, I don't care about. I feel like Batman VR is going to serve my purpose of check this out. You're Batman. There's not a lot of movement. There's gameplay because it's a detective game. Yeah. 
but it's not like you're getting thrown around and stuff. Um, and Be a good that's, way to try it out. That's what VR Worlds I thought was. You could do the Shark Tank and like the street race and everything, and they're more controlled. Um, but with Batman VR being cheaper and being more interesting, being a lot cheaper, yeah. in my opinion, I'm probably just going to skip out on this VR Worlds now because of the price. I'm sure it'll be ten dollars eventually, but yeah, fifty is ridiculous. Unless they don't make a lot of them, I don't see this game selling very well. No, honestly. No. Especially when there's like, when you go to the store and it's like, well, for ten more dollars I can get this next game, for twenty more if I buy it later I can get this other game, or for twenty less I can get the Batman one. Yeah, get the one with Batman on. I or? don't think the one with a bunch of nameless stuff on the front is going to do the very tech well. demo or the Batman game for thirty dollars less. I mean that's yeah. Um, the next one is Rigs, which is one that I'm worried about. It's fifty dollars, um, and it's kind of like a robot. F- football game uh basically there's a ball you're in mechs um this one has been reported to make people very sick because you run with the mech and then you can turn the mech kind of like mech assault works yeah but then you can look around in the mech as well so you're controlling three things um and then on top of that you have guns so you're shooting other mechs to kill them and you can like catch a ball and you can either run and jump through the hoop in the middle to score like three points, or you can throw it in to score one or two. Um, sounds like fun, though. So it's a sport. It sounds like fun. I I wanted it. I'm a little worried because if I get motion sick, that's the game that'll do it, and I don't want to spend a bunch of money on a game that's going to make me motion sick, and I don't want to play it. I'll play it. Um, but my biggest problem with that game is it's very community-based, and then they're pricing people out of it it kind of sounds like a rocket league almost but more complex yeah it it very much reminds me of a more expensive rocket league but the problem or lack thereof was rocket league was free and that's what made it explode yeah free for everybody huge community people love it oh i missed it i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it now it's on xbox we're all gonna get it like this is fifty dollars it doesn't come bundled with it, which I feel like is the biggest. It should one hundred a digital copy of this game should come bundled that, that would be with a, every a, PSVR. A great bundle game, yeah. Especially because it's a guerrilla game, which is a Sony owned studio. Um, but yeah, fifty dollars to possibly get motion sick because people are going to look at this and be like, "Well, this might be the one that's too much this for be me." The one that, yeah. It's also a competitive game. It's also kind of a sport. Like it's it's also a team based game. So people are going to want friends that also have PSVRs to have it. And I feel like you should have really bundled this one. And I think fifty dollars is way too much for a game that needs a community to survive. To work, yeah. I'm sure you could play against bots, but I don't know how fun that's going to be. I don't know. I haven't played it yet. Um, and then the final one I have on here, though, there's a couple of them, uh, is Resident Evil Seven. It comes out in January, but that's a sixty dollar game. I just wanted to yeah point out, but it's completely playable in VR. Um, great, a great VR game. Yeah, I'm very excited for that. I think January 24th. Uh, Gran Turismo, the new Gran Turismo that comes out in November, is a VR game. So there's definitely VR games that are going to be full priced games that are playable without VR, basically. And on the uh, covers of the game, it's got a little tag that says "You'll need this to play," and it shows a picture of the PSVR, which is yeah, fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's games like that, and then there's the other option, which is like Final Fantasy, which has a VR mode. But then the game isn't VR, yeah, it's which I feel like is the weakest thing you can do. Some of the ones I'm interested in is Res, which is a launch title that I'm definitely getting. Uh, I don't care what the price is. I'm, I'm going to get that one. I imagine that one's going to be like a 20 or $30 game. Yeah, probably. And I'm like, why is that cheaper than the, the, the Riggs game? I don't know. Um, and then another one was... Um, oh, I don't know. But I, I'm very interested in the digital pricing and the physical pricing and all that stuff for these games, because uh, I will be getting a handful of them and trying them out. Yeah. But they may have tur- literally turned me off of getting VR World and Rigs. Yeah, the which, VR World one's crazy. Which kind of sucks. I don't get that. So I'm, I'll am i get Batman, I'll get Res for sure, and then maybe like 100-foot Robot Golf or something. If you I, have to get 100-foot If, if that golf. comes out day one, I don't know what the launch title is. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I hadn't are. seen a date for that, so... So I'll get that if that's a launch title. Oh, Super Hypercube is the other launch title that's very interesting. Uh, in that game, basically you have a cube. It's a pretty simple shape. There's a hole in the wall that's getting closer to you that has that shape, and you, oh, have, to, yeah, yeah. you have to turn the cube so it'll fit through the hole. to fit through the hole, and then when you do that, more... St- 
uh, sides kind of slam onto the cube and then the hole changes and you need to turn it to fit it in and it gets to the point where this cube is huge and you need to start like looking around the cube and everything to see the hole on the other side to be able to turn it correctly it's kind of like their Tetris yeah. for the VR and apparently I haven't played it apparently it's very addicting and very fun uh, so that's another one that I'll sounds like a up. cool twist on a puzzle game so. yeah and it's also a launch launch game I think puzzle games would work very well in VR yeah that's a I, good idea I think that I, if I was a designer, I'd think about puzzle games because they're friendly to everybody. They're not too crazy. Anyone can play them, you know. I want to build Mario Kart in VR, so, you know. That sounds fantastic. Exactly. You look up and there's a blue shell about to hit you. Son of a... <laughs> 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 okay. Let's move on to viewer questions. Uh, this one inspired by Mighty Number no. 9, I'm sure. Um, how do we feel about kickstarting games and just crowdfunding games in general? I have crowdfunded three games, not too many. Two games. Two video games, one board game. Uh, you have not crowdfunded anything. I've kickstarted anything. exactly zero things. Okay. Game so what are your matter. thoughts on Kickstarter games? Uh, I don't know. It's not something I've ever really looked much into, honestly. Um, I don't know a whole lot about them other than you're paying to hopefully get these games published. Yeah. My, the my issue is that you're giving money to people you don't know very well. And that if it goes under, you just out money. Mm -hmm. and I, I don't think that's a good idea. Not for me anyway. So. Right. Yeah. That's the thing. It's totally optional. Um, and many games have failed their Kickstarter campaigns. Um, I There's services like Fig, I believe it's called, <clears throat> that Psychonauts 2 did, where it's way more expensive to get into the Yeah, the it's Kickstart, more selective. But it's... Um, an investment so when the game makes money you make money so you're literally like buying stock in the game see i like that a lot i think that's uh, a good idea. kickstarter is literally just i have an idea i don't have money for the idea anybody want to fund does me? anybody want to help me and as a bonus not as a pre-order because people think it's a pre-order as a yeah, bonus pre i'll give you this thing and like and i'm torn because i'm normally so anti things that I don't like that I don't want to give them money I don't want all this stuff and like I'm kind of against the idea of a Kickstarter for games at least for yeah, some it's kind of weird for games to do it but as, as long as they usually take to come out yeah they, they take a long time to come out so much can go wrong during the creation of a game it's not like a product where you know you yeah it's not like a solid you thing. can build one of them for a price and be like this is what we're making we're making more of these it works let me show yeah. you how it works it's, it's not like that like a game you're literally selling a concept yeah uh <laughs> it's very difficult to sell. Um, so I, I'm torn on that spectrum, and I know that there's gaming ones specifically, but I feel like they need to do the model better. I feel like the biggest problem with Kickstarter, especially Mighty Number no. 9, which is a Kickstarter most people were mad about. I wasn't mad about the Kickstarter. I wish they communicated more. Yeah. But other than that, I, I don't have a problem with the game. I think the game is great. I don't have a problem with most of the stuff that they did, like the delays and stuff. That's fine. But the reason that they delayed it and all this stuff was due to the stretch goals, which I feel like is really the problem with Kickstarter. You want more money, so you start saying, so you well, if we get 20000 more, we'll add this. If we get 100000 more, we'll add that. If you get 200000 more, everybody gets a guide. If you do this, everybody gets a soundtrack. And you start piling up all these things that then you have to make the game. And the worst offender, which I think is what hurt Mighty Number no. 9, is when you're like, it'll be on... PS4 and Xbox It'll be on One. Every system we can It'll find. be on 360 and PS3. It'll be on Vita and 3DS. And now they literally they didn't make a version of the game and port it. They were all in development at the same time. They literally made like ten games, or yeah. you know, one for PC, PS4, Xbox, and but they made multiple made versions four or five of the different versions of this game. Yeah. The 3DS version, when it comes out, isn't going to be like the other ones. I'm sure. Yeah. Um. I, and I and same with it. the Vita one. Uh, and that's where you get things that don't run well and stuff. You're you're making ten games at once, and that's a problem. Um, so I don't know what they could do about that. If Kickstarter, like if stretch goals are too unrealistic, or maybe you could have stretch or goals. There should like be a limit to them. A limit, or if you could be like this stretch goal will be dropped if necessary. You know, like something like that. Because <clears throat> I really think my number nine would have been better if they were like, look, we're doing PC, we're doing X, uh, PS4, we're doing Xbox One, we're doing Wii U. We'll do PS3 and, and 360 because we'll, we'll I those. feel like that's yeah. reasonable. And then be like, we're not doing the online. Uh, it's way too much to do servers and all the stuff for our, our side-scrolling game that people will play it online for maybe a week and be done with it. Yeah. Also, we're really dumb and made so you can only play online if you've beaten the game. So the user base online is just not there. Um, 
we're removing all the online stuff from the game. And then all that budget that got stripped from this huge pile of cash that we had is now going into making these other versions even in, tighter, ports, even yeah. better. Um, I and, feel like that's the and way they to will do come it. out later than the original product. That's how they should have done it. Yeah, like announced from the beginning that they're not all coming like the, out at the we're, same we're time. We're focusing on the newer consoles. These will come later. Yeah, that's that's fair. I mean, that's what ended up happening anyway. Yeah, the 3DS one says coming soon. The Vita has no disclosed date, of course. Yeah, um, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so I, I feel a little torn. But then like I look at something like Shovel Knight, which was a Kickstarter game that's fantastic. They're still doing free expansions for it. It's on everything. Shovel Knight's on every everything. It's on Vita. It's got a physical copy on Vita. Yeah. You know, it's physical in stores. You can buy it. Um, that game's doing great. And that with the Kickstarter for that was $311,000. And Mighty Number no. 9's was over $4 million when you total everything together. Mm. And I'm just like, what is the difference here? And I was like, well, Mighty Number no. 9 has voice acting. So they had to pay. And they're good, like, famous voice actors. Well known, Some yeah. of them, yeah. And it has Japanese voice acting and American voice acting. So you had to pay all the voice actors and get a studio to record yeah, and all this stuff. Game, and so. Yeah, all, all that stuff. And I, I think it's a little apples to oranges when they're doing a 8-bit, like, there's no... They're, literally, all they had to do was make sound effects and background music. And, yeah, they could do know. all that in-house. Correct. So no, no hiring voice acting. It's a little different, but, I mean, Shovel Knight is a better game than Mighty Number no. 9. Um, yeah. So... It's a lot more focused game. Yeah, it, it's great. I, I can't wait for the next Shovel Knight, whatever they do. Super Shovel Knight, please. Super really want Super Shovel Knight. And then I want Shovel Knight 64. I think that would be the coolest Nobody's thing ever. Nobody's going to do that. That would be so cool if they did Shovel Knight, Super Shovel Knight, Shovel Knight 64. That would be so awesome. That's not going to happen, though. I wouldn't be surprised if it does. I don't think you get that. I think we get Super Shovel Knight next. I think you will get another Shovel Knight, though, as well as that game did. Yeah, that game killed it. Yeah. Um. So anyway, that's what I feel about Kickstarter. That's fair. I think the fig thing's awesome. I was gonna do uh, Psychonauts two, uh, back it, and then I kind of forgot. Um, then you sucked. Yeah, but <laughs> I I think that that's interesting, and I'm gonna wait because that was the first major Th game. That one's more of an investment than it just is an a investment. The basically they're donations, otherwise. Mm -hmm. Um. But I would have backed that if I remembered but it'll be interesting now because that's the first big game that did it so I'm interested to see how it actually does and if people get like a return because if they do then more people are going to flock then there more people are going to try to do that yeah, yeah. Um, also if to me it feels like you believe in it more if you do that you're like look we're all in this together let's do this because I I'm you're, you're with this I'm, to the end. I'm yeah. the captain of the ship and I will sink it or we'll make it to our destination. One way we're getting somewhere. <laughs> and you're just, you know, either you're on board you're or along you're along for not. the ride, yeah. yeah. Um, whereas I feel like the other ones, it's kind of like, Thanks for we the bought money. you a ship and I'm just getting on it and sailing off. <laughs> and everybody else is like, where'd he go? <laughs> Hope he comes back with the fish yeah. <laughs> or whatever he yeah, went we're to we're going to starve if he doesn't. Um, let's move on to some game releases. Oh. What do we got? I don't know. Took a solid picture of it for you. It's not a solid picture. It's a terrible picture. It's funny. You could just go on the website that I use. That's a lot of work. Okay. <laughs> we don't have write-ups. Um, I don't even know if I know many of the games this week. So. Um, I don't know many of them. I looked through them earlier. Uh, I can barely read this one because it's cut off almost. <laughs> <laughs> not my fault. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah. Uh, Seventh Dragon 3 Code VFD for the 3DS. Don't know that one. Don't know that one. Uh, I Anar don't know many of these. <laughs> Anarcute, X-Bone PC. I'll stop you if I know it. <laughs> you, you'll know this next one. I don't know if you know the game, though. Uh, Ghostbusters, X-Bone PS4 PC. Oh, yeah. This is like a weird sp spinoff, I guess I want to say. It's not the movie, but they really wanted it to be the movie. Like, it's as close as you can get without it being the movie. Um, that, that's kind of odd. Yeah, and it's... I don't know. That whole franchise I feel like is getting they should have left kind it alone. of shit on and yeah. it's not a sequel but it tells you in the trailer about the first Ghostbusters so it is a sequel but it's a reboot and like Bill Murray's in it. I don't know I don't think they know what they're doing with it. I don't think they do either I'm not saying it yeah that's for sure uh, kill strain ps4 um, I have something on Ghostbusters. I saw a pretty oh. funny picture that had the Ghostbusters toys, and they were in the clearance aisle at Target already. And the movie's not even out. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> um, Killstrain is kind of Sony, 
uh, Sony's attempt at a MOBA, I guess I'll say. It's not quite Paragon level. It's it, it's a 5v5v2 game where the two are these mutants, yeah. and they can kill the other players and drag them into the strain that the mutants leave. And if they do it, they join the mutant team. So it's a... It's a cooperative, it's, competitive game where it you sounds turn. sounds terrible, but it's actually kind of fun to it's, play. It's okay. Where you, like, turn on your teammates, though. That's the, I don't understand how you can be competitive with the idea of turning on yeah, people. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it being competitive. Um, I see it being more of a Yeah, that, that's what I thought was weird. I, it's not really for me. Uh, the game's been in, like, alpha forever. I've played it forever ago. It's stupid because nobody's going to care that the game comes out. I don't know if it's coming out physically or what. Uh, it but just says July 12th PS Plus members, so I'm assuming it's a uh, PS Plus thing. Oh, uh, yeah, that's what they did with Paragon last week. Paragon was free for PS Plus members, and it comes out for regular members in a week or something. I don't yeah. know. Um, whatever. Yeah, it's try it out. I think it's it's free, so yeah, it's see if you like it. It's fine. It's give it. Right. I say give it three games and see how you feel to get the mechanics. It's I, very odd, but yeah, it's kind of fun. It didn't really grab me. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Uh, Militant, PS4, PC. What? I don't know what that is. Something military with ants, because the A is capitalized. That's all I got. Okay. (laughs) If you're into the military and or ants, you might like this game. Uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Extreme Versus Force for the Vita. Yeah, I don't think those games are very good. Um, I think a lot of people like them because they like Gundams. Right, but I don't think those games are actually I've never played one, so I would like to. Uh, Moon Hunters for the PS4. Anything? All right. Mm-mm. Polybridge for the PC. Song of the Deep, Xbone, PS4, oh. PC. Um, that's like a, a side scroller, I believe, where you're in a submarine. Uh, I think it's done by Insomniac, and that's the the first game that GameStop's publishing. Oh, that's okay, their GameStop okay. published one. You can buy it there physically, or you can get it digitally. Uh, very interested to see how that does and how that goes. I don't know how the game will be. Also, Insomniac must be a much bigger studio than I picture, because they do a lot of games and they come out fairly, really quickly. Quickly, yeah. Like yeah. they just did Ratchet and Clank, and then this. They're working on Spider Man. Yep. They did Sunset. I don't know. They they have a lot of you got a lot going on that they're capable of doing. Uh, Super Mutant Alien Assault X-Bone PS4 and then it cuts off because you took a terrible picture <laughs> Tumblestone PS4 Wii U PC that's a weird combination uh, that's that puzzle game that's uh, I think it's free on Xbox that's uh, a free Xbox game yeah typewriter PS4 Vita I'm gonna look into that because that <laughs> that's an awesome name <laughs> Uh, video Ball, X-Bone, PS4, PC. Crush Your Enemies, PC, iOS, bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Android. Sounds like, a bun- sounds like a game I definitely will not play. Yeah. <laughs> Infinium Strike, PC. Uh, Monster Hunter Generations, 3DS. You've never played a Monster Hunter, have you? Uh, not a real Monster Hunter. I've played like Soul Sacrifice and okay. Freedom Wars and stuff, but I've never played an actual I have Monster Hunter. three... It's pretty good. Those games are huge. Yeah, I know. Soul Sacrifice. I I go on a website that I use. uh, It's called howlongtobeat.com, and I use it to get a general idea of how many hours I need to budget. I always talk about how I ration out my games, how many hours I need to put into a game a day to be able to beat it in like a week or two weeks or however long I want to spend with it. And (laughs) I got Soul Sacrifice, and I was playing it for a couple hours. I was like, okay. And then like I went on the thing, and it was like 170-something hours. I'm like, well, I'm just done with this game. (laughs) Yeah, I have Monster Hunter 3 Extreme, and that game's ridiculously long. Yeah, I I have nowhere near the end of it. I like Uh, finishing things, and I'm not going to do that. Obliteracers, X-Bone, PS4. That's my last one. Kind of a weak week. Monster Hunter, that's about it. Yeah. Um, if you play those games. Yeah, it's kind of a weak week. This whole month, I feel like, is very weak. Uh, we can move into what we're playing because it's going to kind of tie into this. Um, I've been playing... I finished Tokyo Mirage. I can finish that. You haven't. I've been slacking. I highly recommend this game if you have a Wii U. We talked about it last week ad nauseum, but if you have a Wii U, I really, really think you should play this game. I think you should give it a shot if you don't like this style game, because it does handhold you enough that it's not that frustrating, and if you play on easy, when you die, you just get to retry again, so you're not, like, punished. I think it's a great entry, and it's 
the tip of wacky. So you, oh yeah, you like I feel like if you beat this game, you'll be fine for the other games that throw stuff at you. And then also, um, if you like Fire Emblem, it's cool to see your see Fire, some Emblem of Fire Emblem stuff, yeah. characters and stuff in it. I really, really do like that game, though. I, I won't talk too much about it though because you haven't finished it yet. Um, I've been playing Mighty Number no. Nine like a maniac. I watched some of that. I beat it. I beat it in uh, hyper mode, which you die in three hits, and it was very frustrating and very difficult. It took me like seven hours to beat the last level in Yikes. hyper mode. I just kept dying on the final boss. I could get to the final boss. Literally, it was to the point where I got to the final boss every time without taking damage or anything, and I got like all the sprinter tro- There's You get awarded points if you're fast through certain sections of the game. I got all the sprinter trophies. I was just zipping through the level, and then I'd get to the boss and just get murdered. And the annoying thing is you can get, like, a sub-tank, which refills your health, but you only... You have to absorb enough enemies to fill it up. So if you die when you spawn, you don't have a sub-tank, and you're at the boss. Yeah. So you basically have one shot to do it because you have one tank to fill your health with. And, like, every single time I would get to the boss, it would give me a crappy pattern at the beginning, and I'd get hit a bunch of times. So I'm like, Aah! and I'd have to use the tank right away, and it's like I didn't need it. Um, so anyway, I beat that. That was really frustrating. I broke a controller. Um, <laughs> then I beat the game on hard, all at one go, on hard without losing all my lives in under an hour. I beat it in 52 minutes. Yikes. Uh, that was rough, but I was able to do that one. Uh, and I got all the fine play trophies, everything. I apparently kickstarted it enough to get the uh, strategy guide. I didn't know that until yesterday. That had been useful. Uh, yeah, so I looked at my thing, and the strategy guide shows you where all the sprinter trophies are, which there's like three-ish, probably average, on each level. Uh, and you need to get every sp- sprinter to get a trophy so i went and i did that uh that took a long time because there's no record of which ones you're missing so i literally just had to go through and redo everything and i couldn't figure it out i'm like i know i've gotten all these which one am i missing and it turns out that the one i was missing was the level that i always play first because i got that trophy in the beta or that sprinter in the beta and i didn't actually do it in the real game and i was like oh um, Terrible. So all I have to do is the boss rush in under 20 minutes and the final challenge, which is beat the game on normal without dying. So that one's going to be a little rough. Uh, it's I'm, just on normal, though. It is just on normal, but it spikes kill you in one hit no matter what. That's the uh, problem. Yeah, yeah. So like enemies aren't going to be a problem, but spikes kill you in one hit and pits and stuff. And then every level has a trap that kills you in one hit. And if you, the cool thing about the game is like if you kill the airplane boss, uh, and then you go to the fire level, he shows up on the fire level to help you because you've already like converted him back to good, and he'll knock down all the things that instant kill you. And like if you kill the fire guy and then you go to the ice guy, he'll show up and melt the ice so you're not sliding around when you're fighting the boss. In the challenge mode, you don't have the assist from the guys; you have to play it in the order that they give you. Um, and there's a couple levels that I don't, I've never actually played without having the assist. So like, I'm not sure what I'm in for. Like, I see what they do. So I see what they're disabling or saving me from. Yeah. And they're all instant kills for the most part. Um, so I'm probably going to die to something that I don't even know is Weren't in the game. expecting, yeah. Um, so I got to do that. I'll probably have the platinum for that game, uh, by the end of the week. And I will say that's the hardest platinum I've ever gotten. I don't think I've ever been so... I haven't been that frustrated playing a game since, like, Kingdom Hearts 1. Where I'm, like, screaming at the TV and punching Bra- stuff. Breaking controllers. Goddamn. Um, how frustrating. Um, and then I play more Dark Cloud. I'm just still just doing a couple of those every once in a while when I feel like it. Um, and then I hopped into Final Fantasy XIII 3 again. I, I loved it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I have some downtime, so I kind of think I want to finish that because there's no games coming out in July uh, that I want at yeah, all. Yeah, there's not a lot. Yeah. Uh, the next game that comes out that I want is No Man's Sky, which is August. So I have a bunch of time, and I feel like now is the time to finish uh, that tr- trilogy. Um, I'm a, c- a couple hours in. It's totally different than 13 and 13.2, which I enjoyed. I see why people don't like it instantly. The story is really up its own ass. Um, the lightning sucks in this way. She's totally, her personality is 100% different. 
Uh, I don't like it. The the plot, like the what you're trying to accomplish, is literally the exact same as 13 and 13 2. They were the same story, but a par- kind of like a parallel yeah. or a reverse, I guess you could say. This one is back to 13 story again, and I'm like, I don't want to do this again. So I've already done this. I one. oh my god, all the characters are different because reasons. Like they have totally different personalities. One of the characters is literally just back to how they were in 13, and I'm like. Fuck time travel stories, man. This is stupid. Um, They're hard to do correctly. Yeah, it, it, it's not good. Uh, but it seems way more like Majora's Mask or almost like a Zelda where you have a timer and it's like a real timer. And if it runs out, I think you die or something. I don't know. It hasn't run out on me yet, but you get spells that slow down time and stuff just like Majora's Mask. And you do objectives and you have to finish them at certain times and people are only in the area at From certain times time a day. This, yeah. and, you need to, and it's one of those games. And I hate games like that. Uh, I have the strategy guide, so if worse comes to worse, I Just have crack it over. the guide. But yeah, um, so my goals for this month are Dark Cloud Platinum, Mighty Number no. Nine Platinum, finish thirteen three. Good luck. Your turn. I hadn't done anything this week. All right, and we're done. <laughs> you just play some league. Played a lot of league. Oh, I've been playing uh, Uncharted Four. We yeah, played, we started playing that again. Um, the DLC, the first multiplayer DLC, DLC is out pack or you can buy a pack they changed the triple pack into the explorers pack which gives you the single player DLC when it comes out and it gives you 3000 something uncharted points to spend 3200 I think uh, I if you buy that I recommend don't spend them all because when the next pack comes out you'll have those points to buy that stuff too uh, so I only bought the P90 and then I might yeah. buy something else if I want to. They added the ranking, which is awesome. Thank God. Yeah. The, um, the rankings. Nice. They fixed the leaderboards. They uh, added the P90, which is the only thing that really matters, but they added new <laughs> mysticals, a bunch of new skins, uh, a new map that's free for everybody. So the new map. Sweet. It's definitely worth checking out. That multiplayer is still super strong. Lots of people good. playing it. It's just mechanically fantastic and it's visually fantastic. It's very good. Played a little bit of that. I played some more of that yesterday, mm-hmm. a couple days ago. Um, been playing a lot of League. I don't really know why, but I'm back on that game. It's terrible. It is terrible. <laughs> just like you. Yeah. As a human being. I don't care. In general. <laughs> That's why I play League. Um, Got to finish Tokyo Mirage. Probably do that this week. Yeah, you do. We have a friend that's 60 hours in, 50-something hours in. He's doing all the side stuff. He's doing He's everything he can possibly do. Yeah, that's not what I did. I'm like, I've put in like half the time, and I'm like two chapters ahead of him. Yeah, that's the other thing. He's only... Well, I guess I, yeah, he's only a couple chapters in, as opposed to you, who's further ahead, which is weird. Yeah, I beat like, it. I'm like thirty. I beat it real fast because I did the whole ninety nine yeah, grinding. And I don't just have that. Went through. Uh, if you buy the collector's edition, you get some extra dungeons, which are very helpful. Uh, so I went through and just listened to a couple podcasts and maxed out the three characters that I cared about, and I did the side quests for the three characters I cared about. Um, See, I'm doing all Tiki. the side stuff. I I don't know what he's doing. It takes so long. I just don't know. Yeah, I'm a little confused, too. Yeah, oh well. He's not right in the head, though. So. Well, we already knew that. <laughs> that put a little more Overwatch. Nothing special. Yeah. So I'm interested to see the fall off on that game. Played some NBA. It, seem, it seems like th- it's going to be more than I think people thought. I think it's starting to fall off a little bit. Yeah. It de- I mean, it's definitely Although, when off. I go into games now, there people people's rankings in that game on PC anyways are ridiculous. Yeah. Also, some company was going to sue. Did you see that? Uh-huh. They made a cheat that makes it so you can instantly see everybody's health. And uh, I think it also let you see three people through walls. That was it. It was a hack that let you do that on PC. Yeah. And Blizzard threatened them. As well they and, should. And they're like, they're suing them now for $10 million. Um, and their response was... Uh, we're just going to make it so it's harder to detect that you have it active and you can't sue us because we're in Germany and you're an American-based studio. And I was like, you should probably get some lawyers. <laughs> That's probably not a good <laughs> you, could, you could probably, <laughs> yeah. That might not go well for you. Um, but yeah, they're they're at least on top of that, which I like because I fucking hate when people do stuff like that. Yeah. Hack I hadn't games. run into that yet. but It'll be interesting when the new character comes out. That's that, I, think, I, think I think that'll, that'll be the spike. telling point. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to see the new character. Did you watch any of the games done quick? I watched a little bit of it, not a lot. I watch I watched some Mega Man block because I always watch the Mega Man block. Yeah, guy playing Mega Man three, no insult to him because he's still better than me. Died multiple multiple times, like way. M- he probably died more in his run of Mega Man three than I've seen c- like cumulative of everybody playing the Mega Man things. I was like, that's 
Really? Yeah, I don't know what he was doing. He got game overs and stuff, which you rarely see. He yeah. had to restart levels because he got game overs. I was like, this is kind of shitty to watch, unfortunately. Um, the coolest one was Catherine, which took over League of Legends, which I really liked. I have a picture of it. Uh, the I mean, the, the, the games on Quick always does that. You can always tell what they're playing because they're usually second or third or first. Yeah, it, 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 they had almost a double League of Legends viewers, just Catherine. And then when Catherine finished, it dropped off again. Yeah. It wasn't even on the main page again. Uh, so the guy played Catherine uh, versus mode. Uh, one person plays as Vincent, one person plays as Catherine with a fight stick and a controller. And he beat the entire both. game like that it was awesome that's impressive it was awesome we need to play i think we should play some competitive catherine that sounds try that out really yeah oh it, it looks so fun that sounds terrible um you can play as catherine or you can play as vincent i think yeah i watched a little bit i caught some of the uh trials hd run the other day it's the last mm-hmm. one i saw i watched the blind castlevania playthrough the uh the that was sweet he played oh. symphony of the night blindfolded yeah, those are always interesting, the blindfolded ones. He went into the menu, because if you pick up items, it adds stuff to your menu, and you can only go by sound, and the menu sound doesn't change. And he's like, oh, I think I picked something up. And you have to like remember if you picked it up, because everything's going to be one further and all this stuff. Yeah. It's kind of cool. He messed up a couple times, but it's funny because he's blindfolded. So like, yeah. he's like, am I in the store, or am I in the pause menu? Where am I? So, and he's like, oh, just reset the game. <laughs> he's like, like, I, I can't know, figure it out. I don't out. know where I am. <laughs> Um, yeah, I remember the uh, blind punch out from a couple years ago. That was very impressive because he could. He was he was literally reading off his times like to the hundredth of a second. That's crazy. He's like, I think I beat that one in whatever point two nine. Everybody's just like, Oh my god, how many times have you done this? <laughs> yeah, that's incredible. It's like that's impressive. Um, I watched somebody play. It wasn't in Gamestun Quake. I found a YouTube channel. I meant to give him a shout out. I'll give him a shout out next week when I get my platinum because uh, I used his guide or whatever. He is a very small YouTube channel. He has like 100 subs, but he plays these games and he's very good. He has a video of him beating Maniac Mode, Mighty Number no. 9, which you die in one hit uh, in an, in 50 something minutes. He goes through the entire game. Uh, very crazy i learned a lot of strategy i watched it i learned a lot of strategies from him just like sticking to walls at certain areas so no enemy can hit you to how to beat the final boss super super fast um to like areas where you can jump uh higher than the map and land on the other side and you kind of jump over some obstacles and things real cool tech uh i wish i had his name written down it's green green x saber or something along those lines maybe if you type mighty number nine green x saber you can find it uh i'll write it down for next week but really really cool highly recommended he did a playthrough of every level and showed you how to get every fine play and every sprinter and every all that stuff so that was really helpful uh, to me before i found out i had a guide yeah in my uh email in your email but it was cool i guess we can do the unpopular opinion now all right dj fun party <clears throat> i've never gotten the obsession with the portal companion cube it's a box with a heart on it they tell us to love it and that <laughs> and that just achieves the opposite and makes me suspicious of it uh i'm certainly not attached to it in any sort of way during the game how do you feel about the companion cube? I love the companion cube. <laughs> Why do you love the companion I, cube? I don't know how to answer that question. So I feel like the exact thing that he said, except that's what makes me, li- I won't say I love it, but that's what makes me like the companion cube. Yeah. They tell you to like the companion cube, and gla- spoilers for Portal, by the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, GLaDOS uh, lies to you, and you know she's lying. Yeah, like, you can, you can tell. tell. So she tells you to love this cube. So you are suspicious of it, and then you kill the cube, and, and you, that's what makes you, you love it. You feel terrible. You feel bad because you he killed was, something. He was useful, and he's there the whole time. He right. never leaves you, and then you throw him in an incinerator. Right. So that's that to me is what it is. It's a connect. They give you a connection to an object that you are suspicious of, and then you kill said object at the end, and then you feel attached to it. So your second playthrough, you you're playing it knowing. Oh, you're my going, second playthrough, I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. Yeah, you you're playing it knowing that you're going to kill the companion. Canyon cube. Um, some other things I want to point out. People love the turrets that say four things. They're like, yeah. we, we don't hate you. We don't hate you. Oh, the turrets are great. They're hilarious. Yeah, like people, there's no, uh, the game's very minimalist. Yeah. There's not a lot of stuff in the game. So people attach themselves to whatever they can in that game because they love the game and you need to find something to, so like you got the portal gun. People don't like Shell because uh, she's 
first person you don't really see yeah, you her don't you don't really know anything her about her so people love GLaDOS people love the companion cube people love the, love cake. the turrets the cake and the portal gun and that's really all you have like I know someone with the plushy companion cube I've tried to steal it <laughs> <laughs> and throw it in the incinerator I wasn't going to do that I was going to keep it <laughs> um yeah, so there's just no other characters to really get attached to. And then I feel like Portal 2, which I haven't played all the way through, uh, they hey, tried to they tried to add some more. They had, like, uh, Wheatley. I think that was his name, Wheatley yeah, or Whitley, kind of something, something like, like that. that. Um, they added him, and they added some it's other just characters. just to interact with, basically. To, I feel like, accomplish the same thing. They added Atlas and uh, Peabody. I think that... Is that right? Atlas and Peabody? I, I can't remember One's round the and one. Yeah, the top of the short. So that the that short might be right. One anyway, one. Uh, like they added some more characters like that, but I feel like they just didn't stick like the love for the first game with the companion cube. Yeah, the everything. first game just felt so, I don't know, original. Yeah. More. So I agree with his compin- uh, opinion. Oh, he's, in, he's absolutely up right. Up until the point where you kill it and then you feel bad because, yeah, she is lying to you. Yeah. Or at I least that it. was my, my assessment of it. I just like him because it's just different. He's kind of goofy. It is very goofy. It's just a little. Goofy. I like Glad- Glados. Is one of my favorite video game characters. She's period. a great character. Yeah. She's just hilarious. Yeah, she sings some songs. She it's yeah. Great. Fun fact for people that may not know, and maybe this gets somebody to buy it, um, or just Google it on YouTube, whatever. Um, the Lego Dimensions has a portal level, and you you beat it. It's a ri- it's the best level in the game, probably. And then when you beat the game, uh, Glados sings a song during the credits for Lego Dimensions. All right, it's pretty good. So, uh, yeah, so that was a pretty good unpopular opinion. I like that one. Uh, if you have an unpopular opinion, go ahead and leave it down below. A, a paragraph will do, and we can get to it on the show. Or you can leave a comment or a question for us to talk about in the viewer questions uh, segment. But that's all for this week. Thank you for being here, Kellen. Yeah. And thank you so much for watching. No problem. Uh, you didn't watch it. Not yet. You watched 50% of it. <laughs> I watched. Yeah, fair enough.